So Caroline and Roger making their choice for us. Um, and you are celebrating Ed Miliband jetting off on holiday on the front of the Times? I don't know. Well, you've got a, you've got a lot of, kind of quite good stories on this sort of long-running... Um, uh, a sort of internal story to come to an end in September when whoever is elected. Uh, the Times... ballot papers going in today, of course. Uh, yeah, the yeah, ballot papers yeah. going in today. Yeah, and the and uh, the Times is uh, leading on one angle, which is uh, Ed Miliband going off on holiday. And uh, like Princess Beatrice, this is one of the considerable number of holidays I think he's had uh, this oh, year. Ouch. He went off to <laughs> um, uh, after the, uh, quite soon after the general election. He also uh, lost his job this year. He lost his job. Let's not but, that. but I know his advisers wanted him to stay on, like mm. Michael Howard did in 2005, to, to have a reasonably yeah. uh, Pacific period has, has of transition. Has that been part of the problem, though, that he basically left the stage you too betcha. soon? You yeah? betcha. Yeah. Of course it was. But, I mean, you can understand why, and, and, and his wife... Um, uh, uh, Justine, Justine uh, was very keen, quite understandably, that he didn't stay on, knowing that it would be just too, uh, it would be very bitter. But the fact, but the fact of him going has left this yeah. sort of carnage. Here, here's a key point, though, the story, uh, reflecting that Pat McFadden, the Shadow Europe Minister, said that Miller, Mr Miliband's team had ignored warnings that the new rules would backfire, i.e. that the way that the membership, or at least the uh, Labour supporters have come in, and skewed as many people would say perhaps now in the party this um, huge sort of drive towards the far left well it sounded I think back in 2012-13 like a brilliant idea mm. you making the, the barrier for entry to a political party so low that anyone young £3. and enthusiastic three pounds yeah. anyone could yeah. sign up and also at the same time trying to kind of break the automatic link with the trade unions yes. by saying that rather than it being an opt-out thing if you're a member of a union that you also vote in, in labor elections that it's now an opt-in um but in actual fact the unions have signed up we we are told we are leaked tens of thousands of people um and we also know tens of thousands of people have paid their three pounds to sign up. Including readers of the Daily Telegraph, it was alleged at one stage, is that right? All kinds of people, kinds have, of people have tried. Yeah. I'm sure it's not that many, to be honest. And then right. Toby Young, who's known as a sort of conservative campaigner, has mm. sort of written about Jones. But it's, yeah. it's, I, I think the number is sort of statistically very insignificant. Yeah. But I mean, the point you uh, I've got no real sort of memory of them from 2010 when the rules were changed because there was a sort of general anger that. Um, uh, was it 2010? Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, when, when, when that it was too close to the unions. When, right. when, when Miliband well, was too let's, close let's to the Let's pose this Ooh, question. So, were people objecting to the change in rules? I don't seem to remember that. I let's let's pose this good. question. If Ed Miliband wasn't going on holiday, if he had stayed on the scene, what could he do about Jeremy Corbyn? Well, you wonder, in the same way that we've seen quite a lot of Labour's big beasts of the past yeah, yeah. come out in the past few weeks, Tony Blair, Gordon Brown, Peter Mandelson, and um, uh, just... This afternoon, David Miliband from across the Atlantic mm. published a comment piece um, talking about it. You would expect him to kind of join that pantheon of former leaders and try and sort of, I don't know, advocate, sense, calm, a kind but of is, a steady is, direction. Is it the issue that all these people that have signed up and are supporting Corbyn have actually deliberately done so to break with that part, that they wouldn't listen to those big voices of the past because they want something different? Quite possibly, but that doesn't mean that that side of the argument doesn't need to be made yes, loudly yeah. and vociferously yeah. to have any chance of succeeding. Yeah. And some would say that it's being made sort of too little and too late um, by those who are now turning up to do it. Yeah. Doesn't it expose that what is the Labour Party actually for? I mean, it's, it's, it's the trade union link nobody really likes. The, the, sort of, uh, the, the, the Tories very skillfully have commandeered that sort of centre ground. Mm. What on earth, what is the Labour... I mean, that's really exposed the, 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 the sort of relative pointlessness of the, the Labour Party. The, might, might, so the, the unless of... you've got this sort of zealous uh, left-wing mm. kind of approach, which is... Bonkers. Anti austerity, perhaps Corbyn would say. But that fill, but, it fills a vacuum yeah. fills where, a vacuum. where, where okay. there isn't. Well, let's move on to the Guardian. We should reflect, uh, like uh, the papers uh, that we've seen so far, there's a picture there of the aftermath of Bangkok. Interesting, actually, that an international story is making the, the front of many of the papers, mm. which isn't always the case. Clearly, uh, still a question mark over what's behind that. But uh, on the Labour story, Burnham and Cooper turn on each other as pressure grows. Now, it was only this weekend that we saw the suggestions maybe that they would get together 
uh, the three other candidates to try and stop the Corbyn bandwagon. Mm. And now it seems actually daggers drawn particularly between the Burnham and Cooper camps. Well, this is the idea. Because of the way the uh, voting works in the Labour selection, it's done on the alternative vote system with where rather than just voting for one candidate, you rank your preferences. That um, Can you go one to four? Just do yes. one, two. One to you four. can do mm. anything there and in between. Um, that, as long as you pay three quid. As long as you pay three quid. Um, that if one of the, well this is the dispute between yeah. Beck Cooper and Andy Burnham, who's second, but if one of the second or third candidates were to withdraw, their preferences would go to the other, thus giving them a better chance of yeah. making a, a show against Corbyn. But they can't agree over who's second and who's third, and each, you know, there have been various leagues. Well basically it's, it's deciding to fall on your sword, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah, before you're stabbed by the other um, but people. <laughs> I suppose the, the point is that um, trying to decide who has the best mathematical chance requires sort of disputed polling and relative leaks of phone bank data and all these kind of things that since the election in May mm, we're, yeah. we're all very sceptical of. So it's basically everybody eating each other yes. at a sort of staggering rate. Very I mean, it's extraordinary. And do, I, does, I, this I, actually, actually, does this play even more to Jeremy Corbyn in that he can rise above yes, this? Absolutely. Or I'm not, I'm not dealing in personal attacks and, and if, so if I was a Corbyn supporter, which God forbid, you, you'd be saying, I, I don't want to listen to all this stuff. I, would, I don't want to see Gordon Brown pacing well, 40 miles at the Royal Festival Hall and saying, don't vote for Jeremy Corbyn, I'd say no. I don't want all these sort of big beasts. If it's, I was a Corbyn It's, it's an excellent like. narrative for his campaign mm -hmm. that while, while you're doing petty yeah, in, yeah, in fighting yeah, and squabbling, yeah, I'm talking about, about the big the issues big things, that matter. The big yeah, issues, it's, yeah. it's a classic of the right, campaign. Right, okay. So Caroline and Roger are taking us, well, inside the papers for your first one. Sun page two and Bendy Burnham. Uh, Yvette, where do you stand, Andy? Uh, in quite a few places, it seems, according to that uh, helpful graphic there. Yeah, so, I mean, this is a wonderful bit of uh, photoshopping by The Sun um, to go with this, this story that's in several of the papers for tomorrow about how the scrap between Yvette Cooper and Andy Burnham and how they, uh, they're sort of uh, arguing over who's the one yeah. who can take down Jeremy Corbyn um, and particularly highlighting here this... Uh, fact of um, Andy Burnham flip-flopping and wiggling around on, you know, where does he really stand the on The Hall Jeremy of Corbyn? Mirrors, yeah. yeah. You know, uh, he attacking so him. Thursday, people attacking Corbyn have misread the mood of the party. Friday, Corbyn vote will make Labour Party a protest. Later Friday, we must avoid going negative in the leadership race. Sunday, victory for Corbyn will plunge the party into civil war. Monday, Corbyn's brought a real energy to this race. I want to capture that and involve Jeremy and my team from the outset. <laughs> Which, Ouch. Yeah, judging by some of the numbers that have been floating around, it might very well be the opposite way around. Jeremy might magnanimously involve Andy and his team. Um, but, yeah, this is just further sort of chaos and infighting. Is it deck chairs on the Titanic sort of thing? I mean, the, the, it's... Uh, it the, has that feeling mm, at mm, times mm, that... Mm. Um, you, you might think that all of the energy that's going into arguing over who's the one to stop Jeremy Corbyn mm. could go into stopping Jeremy Corbyn. Mm. Yeah. Do, do we know, I mean, Yvette Cooper there, uh, as they said, laying down the gauntlet uh, to tell us where he stands. Do we know where they are in relation to Corbyn? I mean, who, who is, is This is up disputed on the rails? Um, yeah. amongst us. There have been various, um, various polls over the last few weeks that have put Corbyn very far ahead, and we've had Burnham second. Um, but um, Cooper... Cooper's team have been putting out data saying that actually they see Andy third and, in, and I think in London even fourth. Um, really? But this is not verified across any of the other campaigns getting this yeah. the same stuff. So it's it could very be much, a bit of dirty it, tricks it, It's very much well. speculation. Yeah. Yeah. And also we've, you know, we've, we've all learned to mistrust polls after what happened exactly. in the election. Yeah. Um, and also some of this isn't even polls, this is um, campaigns releasing their phone bank data, so the contacts they're making when they're okay. phoning people. And one reflects this is all the result of Ed Miliband's reform to the voting system and the Times front page is reflecting uh, he's jetted off to escape Labour leadership blame game. Where's yeah. he headed to? He's headed to Australia on, uh, on another... Which, which is about as far basis. away as you can get. <laughs> you yeah. can get much further away. New Zealand, maybe. He went to uh, Ibiza immediately after the election, uh, uh, as, I, as I recall, and it was his decision to set up this uh, new uh, voting system that has allowed this complete shambles to take place. If you're a sort of Labour... Uh, if you like Labour at all, um, and um, three three quid to three basically quid, support them. Yeah. In. And I think Ed Miliband should have done what Michael Howard did in 2005 and stayed around to to, to provide a more 
Um, an interregnum. Uh, an interregnum, yeah. so, and much more calm, rather than this sort of insane, you know, dogs tearing each well, other's throats. this is the second time, actually, that Harriet Harman's had to kind of pick mm. up the pieces mm. after an election. In 2010, Gordon Brown went yeah. straight away, and then in 2015, Abilaban went straight away. Mm. And both times she's had to, as deputy and then acting leader, preside over this kind of summer of chaos mm. while Labour goes through this uh, leadership contest. Um, it does seem like they've not learned yeah. much in should, should, you wouldn't want to, Sorry, you wouldn't want the Labour Party to run a hot dog stand down on... Yeah, but Brighton we should reflect. Here, I mean, it says there that uh, Ed Miliband had scrapped the old electoral college system because that had given union members, you know, a third of the vote. I, it, was, it was an attempt to make the party more democratic. So and, and at the time, the right it was, I think, rightly praised yeah. for the gesture he was trying to make, or more than a gesture, the action he was taking. Um, what no one foresaw two or three years ago mm. was that this massive groundswell of support for a, a sort of anti-austerity left-wing candidate would have people exploiting the system in their tens, hundreds of thousands. And it does what it does expose is that the Labour Party has no big beast. I mean, whatever you thought of Brown, he was at least one. Blair was a fantastic Prime Minister. If you think of the 60s and 70s, they were very impressive people. I don't so, think so. so have they gone for... Um, the idea, the policy rather than the personality, i.e. they're not actually voting for Jeremy Corbyn, they're going for what he's standing for in that anti-austerity mould. Or perhaps more accurately, what he stands against. Right. Yeah, um, I think it's a passion thing, isn't it? It's rather like nationalism in Scotland. It's not, I yeah. mean... Uh, okay. Um,